Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depends on what time you may be watching this video. Welcome to our weekly morning meeting for the week of May 3rd. I am Miss Jimerson, and we're ready to get started. Of course, like always, let's start off with some deep breathing. Make sure you find yourself a quiet spot. Put your hands on your shoulders. Take a deep breath in and out. In and out. In and out once more. Let's review some tips on focusing as well. We want to make sure our eyes are watching and tracking our speaker. We want to make sure our ears are listening. Our body is sitting still and our voices are also quiet so that we can hear the speaker. Okay, so jumping right into our thinking question of the week. Y'all know I love these thinking questions of the week and these would you rather questions. I think they're so cool. So our thinking question of the week says, would you rather have the ability to fly or the ability to be invisible? Think about it. Our sight word practice this week stems around compound words. And compound words are words when two words are put together to make a new word. For example, raincoat will be one of our words this week. Rain, we know, falls from the sky. And a coat is something you wear on your body. But when we put those things together, or those words together, rather, we know it becomes raincoat. And we know that raincoats usually have a plastic-like covering to keep the rain off of you and keep you from getting wet. Ready? Set, read. So this week's words are compound words. And as we go along in the game, of course, you'll say the word in a normal voice. You'll also say the word in a loud voice. And you'll also have an opportunity to whisper and create a sentence. Now, because you will notice that these words can kind of be almost split in half um you'll notice that they've been pushed together to make a new word for example bedtime we know exactly what a bed is and we know that time has everything to do with the clock so bedtime means it's time for bed of course but it is a compound word where they put two individual words together to make a new word. So this new word is sunset, sunset. Moonlight, moonlight. Skateboard. Skateboard.
wheelchair, wheelchair. Backpack, backpack. Raincoat, raincoat. Footprint, footprint. Bedroom, bedroom. Cupcake, cupcake. This week's word work, we will review genre and with a focus on fiction and nonfiction. We know that fiction is fake. It's not a real story. And then nonfiction is a true story. It's facts. So let's review the anchor chart for fiction versus nonfiction. We know that fiction is not real. It gives us story talks. It's also stories that we like to enjoy. A lot of it has a beginning, middle, end, and illustrations. It always has a character and a problem in the story. Nonfiction is a real story or something real that's happening. We can read it in any order. It has pictures sometimes, um, graphs or charts. It definitely has true information and we can always fact check by looking on the internet. Okay, so are you ready to play a game? This game is called Can You Guess It? So I want you to grab a pencil and paper, number your paper from one to five, read the passages along with me, and decide if they are fiction or nonfiction. So get ready. Passage number one, cheetahs. Cheetahs are the fastest animals on land. They can run 70 miles an hour. That's faster than a car driving the speed limit on the highway. Wow. Passage number two, zebras. Have you ever heard that each snowflake falling from the sky is different? Each zebra has a pattern that no other zebra has, just like snowflakes. Pretty neat, right? 
Passage number three. We meet a talking snake. My sister and I decided to play outside in our front yard. As we were playing, we saw a snake. Yikes. My sister began running, but the snake yelled, Wait, I'm a friendly snake. We both stopped and looked. What? A friendly snake, said my sister. Yes, my name is Freddy, the friendly snake, replied the snake. Passage number four. A new bicycle for Emma. Emma has a new bicycle. It is bright pink and shiny. It was a gift from her uncle. One day, as Emma was riding her bike, she began pedaling faster and faster. As she was pedaling down the street, her bicycle began to raise up off the ground into the air. Emma seemed to be flying. And the faster she pedaled, the higher she was in the sky. Wow, it was a flying bicycle. Passage number five, alligators. Woo, it is warm where alligators live. They live in rivers, lakes, swamps, marshes, and ponds in the southeast United States. They can travel on land, but they aren't as fast as they are in the water. All right, are you ready? Great. Make certain you have all five answers written down. And the answers are... Make sure you check your answers against the correct answers. Passage number one was a nonfiction passage. The passage about cheetahs was all facts. We can fact check that using the internet or our local library and find me a book about cheetahs. All those things were true. Passage number two was also nonfiction. Zebras can also be fact checked by the internet or finding a book or in a magazine. All those things about zebras were true. Passage number three was a fictional passage. We know that talking snakes don't exist. Have you ever heard a snake talk to you? Probably not. That one was fiction. Passage number four was also fiction. We know the faster we ride a bike or pedal the pedals that we will not be flying in the air. Passage number five was also nonfiction. We can also use the internet to fact check about alligators. Good job, guys.
All right, now we're up to our problem of the week. Nico grew 25 cabbages. Sarah grew 10 cabbages. How many cabbages did they grow in total? Use your place value blocks for representation to show how many cabbages Nico grew, then show how many Sarah grew. What should be your next step and what does the question ask? What operation, whether it be addition or subtraction, should you use? How do you know? All right, scholars, make sure you have your pencil and paper handy. Remember that we also are using our RDW strategy. R is where you label what you've read. D, draw what we have. Draw the values. W, write your conclusions. Let's build together. R are the names of the person in the problem, Nico and Sarah. D is my drawing. I know that Nico has 25 cabbages and Sarah has 10 cabbages. I wanted to add this slide in your slideshow just because I think this is some out loud thinking that you can do as you are problem solving. Um, I want to know what your next step is. Once you have the information written down, how will you use the information from the problem? What did the question ask? And what way can you solve the problem? So based on the information that we got from the problem, and also drawing our place value representation, we know that together, Nico and Sarah have grown 35 cabbages in all. Nico had 25 and Sarah had 10. 25 and 10 make 35. Good job, scholars. All right, we've reached the closing of this video. I want you guys to have an amazing week. Make sure to come back anytime to review the words for the week, which were compound words. Um, to check in on your word work, you can go back and reread any of those passages, even if it's just practicing reading. And also check back in on the problem of the week. You can try different numbers, 
of cabbages or what have you. Remember to send me pictures of anything you do regarding the morning meeting as well. And I hope you have an amazing week. Enjoy.